Welcome everyone to today's webinar on Prep Step. Um, we are joined today by Shana, who's going to walk us through this great resource, both for you and your students. Just as a reminder, um, this is an, a, one of the many events in our faculty webinar series. And if you're interested in joining us for any of the upcoming series, there's information about that available on our website. If you are attending the session live today, you will receive a certificate of attendance and the recording should be posted and sent to you sometime this evening. So again, thank you and welcome for joining us today. At the end of the session, we will have time for Q&A and I will also share information uh, to collect feedback from you since this is one of the first times we're doing a series like this. So we'd love to get your input. So today, before we uh, hear from Shana, I just wanna remind you that what you are learning about today is Prep Step, and that is available through the library's website. So the library's website is udc.libguides.com and this uh, resource along with all of the other resources are available to you under our A to Z resource list right here. Prep Step is very popular. Um, so you will often find it over here in our popular section, or you can click on P and find prep step right here. To access this resource, you will need to use the link available through here. You won't be able to access it through Google, and you will be asked to sign in using your UDC email and password. I'm going to stop my screen share now and hand it over to Shana. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Shana Ashwood on the line. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, if you can give me a moment while I share my screen, I have a presentation to share and then I'm going to go right into the session. Megan, can you let me know if you can hear or see my my screen? Yep, the slides are up. And you can okay. And then you can hear me clearly? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit the presentation button. So thank you so much for, for joining me on this review of your Prep Step for College resources. I'm going to be providing a platform overview. Um, and I'm going to get started. Just to reiterate, my name is Shana Ashwood Viala. I am a senior customer training specialist with EBSCO resources. Um, not sure how long you guys have had the um, platform, but I know that um, this is a new uh, offering, so I'm really happy to be able to provide this, this session here today. All right, so we're going to quickly get into how to navigate the Prep Step website the, uh, for colleges and educate your students about the wealth of resources that we have available. I'm going to um, quickly show you how to register and log in, how to access our practice tests and tutorial resources, how to view score reports and download eBooks. I'll also how to show you how to access the My Center repository where everything that a student stores would be saved. And then I'll show you how to locate our video tutorials and support at EBSCO Connect. And let me just exit out of this. I'll return to that screen in a little bit. Um, I know that Megan has already shown you how to access the resources at your library's website. And so now we're actually looking at the platform. It's called Prep Step, and you'll see that um, you've been um, authenticated here. You'll see your uh, University of the District of Columbia at the top of your screen. Um, but this is the Prep Step platform homepage. And I'll start off just by kind of telling you what this platform is all about. Uh, it is the interactive online learning platform equipped with the resources students need to improve their core academic skills, um, helps them score higher on college placement tests, it helps them build workplace skills, explore careers, and prepare for occupational licensing exams and practice tests. It also helps them prepare for graduate school and beyond. So we've got tons of resources hidden behind all of these tile icons that you see here. Um, we love to sell these resources to universities and colleges because it's a, a great supplemental resource. It helps increase student retention rates as well as success outcomes. Um, let me pause here for a moment. I'm trying to find out how to hide my screen because I know that um, this will slow down my presentation and I'm having a little bit of trouble with the Zoom. Hold on one second.
There we go. All right. Thank you. Sorry for that. I just had to find out. I'm sharing two screens. I've got three screens growing, um, showing. So I'm trying to show, figure out which ones to hide. Uh, let me see. We've got something in the chat really quick. That's just me dropping in a link. <laughs> OK. Would you like me to access from there? Oh, no, that's for, oh, that's for everyone in else. case they want direct access. Yes. All right, yes. And I tried accessing from, <laughs> from your link. And because I'm not authenticated, um, I can't. So I'm going to, I'm showing this page, but when I log in, it's actually going to log into my demo account, just so you know. So things will look slightly different um, once I log into the platform, but we're looking at the platform right now. I have not logged in. You can browse the content on the platform before login. So that's what I'm going to do just to give you um, an overview first, and then we'll log in. But um, Megan did provide that link if you'd like to log in on your own and follow along if you've got a second screen. Okay, so just to get started, um, all of our academic content, as I'd mentioned, are um, located behind the icons and the titles that you see here. We kind of organize things by subject, and we call these little icons, these, um, what we're looking at are seven icons, we call them centers. Uh, and that's where you'll find all of your, your subject specific content. Um, you can access any of these centers, the content behind them by either clicking the image or the title, um, and you'll see that the subcategories of each center will kind of display below that um, image. So you see how I clicked on core math skills and science skills, and then you'll see all the subcategories available to you to explore additional uh, the content behind it. Our site is optimized for use on smartphones and tablets, so it will automatically adjust. It's responsively designed to adjust to the screen size of uh, your phone or your tablet. So I'm going to quickly give you an overview of each, starting with this core math and science skills review center. Now, this center has the skill building resources in developmental math and algebra, geometry, introductory statistics and probability, as well as pre-calculus and calculus and science resources like chemistry, biology, physics, and general science. Uh, moving on to the next center is core English skills review. And here you'll find the resources to boost your reading comprehension skills. It'll help you strengthen grammar, spelling, and writing, as well as expanding your vocabulary. The College Success Skills Center provides tutorials and articles that help students improve the soft skills that they need for success in college. You'll find uh, resources for organizational strategies, research skills, classroom management, and how to seek academic support. In the Career Preparation Center, this is a massive center here, you'll see that we have instantly scored licensing, certification, and aptitude practice tests, career preparation, and vital information for a wide variety of occupations. It also includes uh, test preparation for the work keys assessment down here at the bottom, as well as a TOEIC exam to, just, to, um, to show your, your workforce readiness um, in the US. Uh, the next center, and we'll just scroll down. I'm going to jump over to the second row. So we just looked at career preparation. I'm going to go over to the Graduate School Admissions Preparation Center. And here you'll find, actually, let me click that open. Here we go. Here you'll find um, resources to prepare for important graduate school ex entrance exams. Um, we offer practice tests and ebooks for the DAT, the GMAT, GRE, LSAT, MAT, MCAT, as well as PCAT. And then we also have a uh, search tool to help students find graduate schools, programs, and scholarships. Moving right along, we've got the Placement Test Preparation Center. And here you'll find college placement test support to help students accelerate through or to reduce the need for any of those developmental resources or courses. We have practice tests and eBooks for uh, the AccuPlacer, for the ASSET, the CLEP, the COMPASS, as well as a TOEFL IBT exam. And then we also have Recursos para Hispano Hablantes, and that is our Spanish Courses Center. You'll find Spanish language resources um, for basic uh, skills in reading, math, and grammar, as well as preparation for the GED exam in Spanish, and resources to help uh, students achieve U.S. citizenship. Now, um, there is also 
an additional resource called computer skills. This is an upsell up center, an additional center that can be added on to the college library resources that you have here. Normally this comes with a basic level of computer skills, but uh, UDC has upgraded to an additional category and that's why we put it on this tab here called Computer Skills Center. And this resource has all of those skills that you need to hone your, um, your, your computer acumen. So you've got resources for basic computer skills, basic internet skills. We also have popular software tutorials for all of the latest um, applications in the Microsoft suite, including Access Excel, Office, OneDrive, Outlook, PowerPoint Project, SharePoint, Visio, and Word. Uh, so those are all of your centers, eight in total. All right, and we will be going into some of these centers. I just wanted to give you a general overview. I also wanted to encourage you, if you have any questions, to please enter them in the chat. I will be pausing occasionally to see if there are any questions that you have. I have more, we've got more than enough time to, to answer any questions you have. All right, so what you'll notice is, that I've kind of browsed the site. I've accessed some resources. You can always get back to the homepage by clicking the home link here in the upper left corner. You can go back to the college library to access those seven centers that we reviewed. You can also go to the public library link to access that ups upsold computer skills center with all those wonderful video tutorials. Um, but when you're ready to access a resource, like if you're ready to use a practice test or a tutorial or download an ebook, you'll need to register. Um, so you'll come up to the, and actually let me exit out of this COVID alert. Um, we'll click the sign in register link here. Um, and that's what you'll need to do as a new user or a returning user. All right, so for new users, you'll click the register link and complete the information provided on that registration page to create your username and password. It would require, uh, let me actually click over there really quick just to show you. Um, you'll have to confirm the name of your institution. Actually, I'm not sure if you will need to do all of this because you guys are behind authentication, but if you do, you'll need to um, provide your first and last name, your email address, which will become your username, uh, create a password, re-enter that, and then click register. If you are already registered, you'll just enter your username and password in this sign-in page and then click login. All right, so when you log in, um, a little glitch here, it always brings you to the My Center page because it assumes that you are you know, a returning user and that you already have saved information. So it's gonna bring you back to this My Center page where you can access anything you've stored. So this is your repository. But to get back to the home page, we'll just click the home link in the upper left corner. All right, and so now that I have logged in, you can see my username is PS4 Trainer. Um, your name would be listed here. Uh, so that's how you know you're logged in. Now I have logged in to my demo accounts. So this is going to look slightly different um, for training purposes, but all the centers are pretty much the same. It's just organized a little differently. So I'm gonna access a resource here. I wanna get started with showing you how our tests function. So I'm gonna to go to the, um, let's see, the Placement Test Preparation Center. I'll go ahead and click there. I'm going to access a test from the CLEP section, the Prepare for CLEP and DSST exams. And so now I am looking at a sub page or the home page for placement test preparation. Remember, I selected CLEP. Um, I can come back up here and access AccuPlace or our asset, but I'm on the CLEP page or, or section, and I'm going to navigate down to college algebra practice exams. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'm going to start the CLEP college algebra practice exam number one by clicking the start test button. Notice that you also have an option to print a physical copy of this test, but we're gonna simulate the online practice, of course, by clicking start test. So the, this page will load and it's going to give you instructions about uh, the test. It briefly describes the test and provides you detailed inform information on how to take the test. To the right in this little box here, you'll see the total questions in this exam, as well as the time that it need that, that you need to take it in. 
It also gives you up to three test mode options. Um, you can take the test in simulation mode, in practice mode, and in learner mode. Um, the simulation mode, basically, uh, if the test is timed, not all of our, ti our tests are timed, but those that simulate the actual exam, like the CLEP, um, would be timed. So the timer is actually displayed and enforced, which means that if you um, need more than 90 minutes to take this exam, it will end the exam at the 90 minute mark for this particular test. In the practice mode, the timer is displayed, but it's not enforced. So it really helps you pace yourself in preparation for real testing situations. And um, in the learner mode, there is no timer. This is really a study mode. It helps you uh, study the exam as you, as you move through it, all right? So there is no timer. There are no uh, restrictions on that. So you um, can choose any of these modes. The default mode is practice. I'll go ahead and click start test to begin. So then we're brought into the test and we're looking at the exam. At the top is the title of the exam here. Then you see the options to move to the next or previous pages. You can jump to a particular, particular question in the exam. Um, you also have options to save this in progress. So let's say you don't have a full 90 minutes to take it in one sitting. You can click save uh, the finish later button and it'll save your work in progress. It will also pause the timer. When you're done testing, you'll hit the store score my test button here on the right to have it scored. So I'm going to quickly go through this exam and answer a few questions randomly. And let's pretend, just for time's sake, that I've completed the exam, all questions, and I'm ready to score my test. So I'll go ahead and hit score my test here. And then I'll proceed to score. And what will happen is that it's automatically scored. So I'm brought to what we call the score report. And this is an individualized score report, which identifies my strengths and weaknesses on this exam. Uh, it will show me areas where I may need remediation or extra practice, as well as areas where I excelled. At the top, you'll see the test title. Uh, you'll also see the overall score here in this greenish orange, I'm not even sure what color that is. Um, and then below that, you will see a breakdown of the test. So the score breakdown. Um, it will tell you by uh, topic, the skill assessed. Um, it tells you that there are several topics and subtopics here. So topic one, algebraic operations, subtopics, including operations with exponents. And it tells you for each topic and subtopic, the total number of questions asked, the number that I answered correctly, the number that I answered incorrectly, the number that I skipped, and my topic or subtopic score. All right, so this really does break down this exam by all of these major topics and sub subtopics. So just at a glance, you can see what areas you need uh, to, um, to focus on to improve your overall score. Going back up to the score report here, I wanna click the view answers button here um, because at a glance, it will show you how well you perform. So you can see I answered three questions. I answered correctly and one incorrectly. You don't wanna stop there though. You wanna click into any one of these because what will happen is it will take you back into the exam, which has now been scored and annotated with some scoring information for you. So this is a great study tool to go back into the exam by clicking that view answers button. All right, so it will show you what you answered correctly. So I answered number one correctly. I get a green check mark in this bar here. It says you are correct, but let's say I guessed. It also tells you why choice B is correct. It can tell you why choice A is incorrect or choice C or D, all right? Let's look at number two. I answer that incorrectly, so I get a little red X. It tells me A is the correct choice and it tells me why. So these are great useful study tools. All right, so let me go back up to the scoreboard. I'm gonna click the view scoreboard link in the upper right corner. All right, so I've reviewed that view answers button that takes you back into the exam. This is my overall score. I've gone over the score breakdown. Now, be, uh, based on my performance on this exam, um, additional products may be recommended below that score report if we have resources to support your, your learning, right? So you'll see the product recommendations below here. And you see that I have one, two, three, four resources that help me develop my skills and some that help me to improve. So um, we color code the resources 
uh, to indicate whether they are to help you develop your basic skills, improve your existing skills, or provide additional practice. Because I scored so poorly in this exam, most of the resources recommended to me are in the development um, section. All right, so I can access any of these resources uh, right from this recommendations by clicking the link. Now, these are all the resources that are available on the platform from the home page, but it's taking the score that I earned here and then prescribing resources for me. So since I scored so poorly on this college algebra, it's recommending that I take an intermediate algebra tutorial, an introduction to functions tutorial, and a pre-calculation pre-calculus tutorial. So the, these are all resources to help me improve my skills so I can test better when I take the college algebra practice exam number two. All right, so let me pause here momentarily to see if anyone has any questions about that. I'm going to quickly check the chat. And I'll just keep this chat open on my other screen. All right, so no questions. I'm going to keep moving on. Um, what I want to show you now, since I showed you what a test looks like, I want to quickly show you what a tutorial looks like. And since I have some tutorials recommended here, I'm going to jump right into a tutorial right from this recommendation section. I'll go ahead and click the intermediate algebra tutorial. And that's going to launch me right into the tutorial. We're looking at the intermediate algebra tutorial now. In the center of the page, you'll find an introduction to this course or this tutorial. To the left, you'll see an outline. All right. Um, so all of our tutorials are massive documents. They can be hundreds of pages long of content. Um, our tutorials, when available, are equipped with pre-tests as well as post-test diagnostics for um, formative and summative assessments. So this is really self-contained. You can start with the pretest. test I'm sorry, you can start with the tutorial and work your way through the units that are contained within this course. All right, so uh, on the left, you'll see below that pretest, we show all the units of content. If I click an arrow here, it will expose, for instance, unit number one on expressions. It exposes all the lessons contained in unit number one. If I click one of the plus signs, under lesson number two, you'll see all the topics contained within lesson number two. Now you can move sequentially throughout the tutorial as you move through this test uh, with the next or previous buttons here at the top, or you can jump around. So if you know you really need to work on simplifying exponential expressions, you can just jump right to that page in the tutorial. And these are brief pages that give you quick uh, instruction on a topic. You'll see that it explains what this is, it provides some examples, and it also provides you opportunities to test what you know. So you can enter what you think the answer is here and you can click check your answer and it will provide a brief explanation. All right, so you'll see also within each lesson, there are lesson quizzes, there are unit quizzes. So these are really self-contained resources to help you build those basic skills or necessary skills to do well on the, the exam. All right, so that's a tutorial. Lots of content here. I'm gonna exit out of this. I'll click save and finish later. I actually have the opportunity to close without saving or to save. I'm gonna go ahead and click close without saving. And I showed you what a tutorial looks like. I showed you what a test looks like. Let me go back to the home page now. Now we also have resources that are, you know, there are more than two tests and tutorials. We also have eBooks and you'll find over 200 eBooks accessible on our platform. They are really basic PDF files of our content. Just to give you some background, Learning Express many years ago, over 20 years ago, started out as a publishing company. So we're very content heavy. We do publish books. And so we have some of those resources available on the platform in PDF format. Um, I'm gonna use our search box. This is a great tool here, the search box to find resources. Instead of navigating through the individual centers, you can search for a title using the search tool. Now it's not a full text search, so it will only search for like um, items based on the title or the, the description of a resource. So let's say I'm interested in uh, writing resources. 
I'm going to go ahead and type writing there, click the search uh, magnifying glass, and it's going to automatically conduct a search. And you can see here for writing on the platform, there are 56 tests with writing in the title or the description, six tutorials, 14 ebooks, computer courses, and articles. And if I wanted to isolate the ebooks, since I want to show you what an ebook looks like, I'm just going to deselect all these other resources to provide me with the 14 test uh, results for ebooks. So I can click any of these ebooks here. You'll see them. Visual writing, research and writing success in 20 minutes a day. All these ebooks have download buttons. And if I were to click one, I'll just go ahead and click download ebook. It's going to download to my desktop. There are no digital rights restrictions. So these are resources for you to use, download, print, whatever you want. And you'll see this is our title, visual writing. And you can see on the side here, all the pages in this book. Um, you can jump to a page here in the top. If I wanted to jump to page 20, I could. And it's just gonna advance me to that page. So those are our eBooks. Let me go back to the page, the search results, and I'll go ahead and click back home. So those are our eBooks. All right. Um, we do have some fun stuff. Uh, let me see if I can show you what a tutorial, what a flashcard looks like. I'm gonna use the search tool just to make it quicker. Um, we've got a number of flashcards here, um, several pages, 33 flashcards in all. Let me see if I can get a math one. The math ones show better than others. Here we go, an algebra. Flashcard deck number one. I'll go ahead and open up that flashcard. Now our flashcards function just like the flashcards we are used to, the physical ones, they're just in electronic format. So we're looking at mastering algebra. Uh, there are actually flashcard settings here. So if you click the settings, it will show you all the topics in this flashcard deck. We're viewing all topics right now, but you can see the different topics. Uh, algebra fundamentals, linear equations, and so on. Uh, you can view all flashcards or deselect the ones you don't want to view. You can also browse them in the topic order or shuffle your card order. You can choose to show the front first, which is the question first, or the back first, which is the answer first. If you want to play a flashcard Jeopardy, you would show the back first. And if you want to see both side by side, you click both sides at once. And as you move through this flashcard deck, you can actually identify the difficult ones and the easy ones, and that allows you to sort them later. So for instance, if you know there are like five difficult ones, you can come back to this flashcard deck and work on those alone by sorting by the difficult. So this is the flashcard number one, card of 30. Um, this is a question. And if I wanted to see the answer, I would just click that little swap to swap the card, all right? And if I thought this was a difficult question, I could tag it there. And then to move to the next card, I go over to card number two. So that's our flashcard um, functionality. We've got a number of flashcards on this platform. And just remember the flashcard settings here, which allow you to set those settings, all right? All right, so let me go back to the home page. I'm gonna Close, actually, I'll close without saving, yeah. And what I wanted to show you next, um, we've got about half an hour left. I'm moving very quickly. I was ex anticipating tons of questions, but maybe we'll ho hold some questions to the end. What I wanted to show you next is our computer tutorials. Um, you all have access to some resources. I'm gonna click the computer skills here. You have more than I have on my um, demo account, you've got more, uh, a fuller suite of computer tutorials. So I definitely encourage you after today to come and play around with the site, take a look at all the resources we have, I'm gonna access some of the basic resources here. Um, let me go ahead into the computer basic section. You, if, if you have any users who need to understand the basics of getting started with your computer, computer safety, they can come into the computer basics or the internet basics. I'm going to go ahead and open up the office basic resources. Um, we have some here. I'm going to 
actually sample the Excel tutorial. Now, once again, you do have a lot more on your platform, but I'm going to just access one of these. I'll access the Microsoft Excel basic tutorial. We'll click start tutorial to begin. Now, all of our computer tutorials are HTML5 streaming videos with closed captioning for 508 compliance. It will play right in the screen here by clicking that play button. Notice we've got a transcript running here, uh, which will give you the transcript of the audio. You have the opportunity to print that transcript or download it as well. And you can control the video with the tools here, the player pause, mute, or increase the volume closed captioning, and you can also expand this or pop this out into a full screen mode. And I'm going to quickly click. I'm not sure if you can. All right. So I'm not sure if you heard that, but there is an audio of um, the, the instructor as they go through the course. Um, I'll just advance just to show you what some of this content look, looks like. Actually, this is the introduction. So let me go to the table of contents and you'll see that these are very lengthy uh, courses. Some take an hour. So they're not intended to be walked through in one setting. You can always come back and go to a specific section. Um, we can go through the table of contents to jump to a particular area of interest. If I'm interested in um, performing basic calculations, I can click into that section and it'll advance right to that section within the tutorial. All right, so I just muted. I'm not sure if you can hear her talking, but the, you can see the transcript um, and it's highlighting the text as she speaks. And you can basically sit back and watch her demonstrate the basics of using this tutorial, this Excel tutorial. And so those are our uh, computer tutorials. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause there. I'll click back home. Exit out of this COVID alert again. I don't think we need to be reminded. <laughs> um, so that's our computer tutorials. Let me see if we have any questions before I move on to the next few things that I wanted to share with you today. I am a fast talker, so I apologize if I'm talking too quickly. Um, all right, so that's pretty much um, the majority of our content, our resource types. I think I've gone through just about everything. Um, what I wanna show you now is where you access anything you've saved. All right, and so under your username here, you'll see the My Center link. Now, remember when we first logged in, it brought you there. This is how you get back there. You click My Center, and it's gonna take you to where all of the resources you access and save. You can choose to save things or not, but if you do click save on any of the tests or tutorials, they will be housed here. And as long as you have a subscription, you can come here to uh, re-access those resources again. And we organize them by resource type. So any tests that you've taken, any tutorials, any eBooks you've downloaded, all of that information would be housed here. Remember, I didn't save the flashcards, so nothing is there. Um, but remember that col college algebra CLEP exam, it is there. And if I click this plus sign, it will give me some details about that exam. So it tells me that I've completed it. It tells me the date that I scored, the date and time. And if I click the plus sign here, it will also give me access to those recommended resources. There is also an access to the score report, or I can jump back into the exam by clicking view answers. And so that's the My Center repository. Now, I went over a lot of stuff and I went very quickly. Uh, if you come back here a month from now or two months from now and you're like, well, what did she say? How did I access that? Uh, you do have access to what we have um, under the help link here called video guides. And you can actually click video guides to view an instructional video. It's a 20 minute video that goes over the features and functionality of our platform. You can view the full length video here, which is 20 minutes, or you can jump to a particular 
mini video. If you need to learn how to take a test, you can jump right to that video or how to take a tutorial, how to access my center, how to download eBooks and articles, um, as well as information about my centers. Let's see. I see we do have a question here. Is there practice for the LSAT? Yes, there is. So let me go back to the homepage. Uh, under graduate school admissions preparation, you've got practice for the DAT, which I think is a dental assistant, or I'm sorry, dental, uh, dental school admissions test. Uh, GMAT, GRE, LSAT, there we go. So let me go ahead and open up the LSAT resources and you'll see that we've got practice for the LSAT exam, LSAT logic games practice, as well as LSAT logic games ebook. So I'll go ahead and open the LSAT practice exam so I can, uh, actually I've never actually launched the LSAT. So this one is uh, 99 questions, 140 minutes. Once again, those practice modes and you click the start test to begin. So this is supposed to simulate the official exam. Um, and you'll see this is analytical reasoning. It's gonna provide you with questions and answers. I'll go ahead and click score my test. I haven't answered anything, but I'm just gonna jump in just to show you that this does also break down um, for the LSAT, analytical reasoning, logical reasoning, and reading comprehension, number of questions, correct, incorrect, and skipped. If we jump back into the test, it's going to provide you, actually, I didn't answer anything, so let me just jump into any of the questions. And now I'm looking at the test that's been annotated with scoring information. So it tells me the correct answer and why. All right, so that's the LSAT. All right, so let's see another question. Videos online is a lifesaver, very helpful to be able to review or in some cases see for the first time. Yes, those video guides are very helpful, which are accessed right under the help link. Uh, let's see. How do you find that professors typically use prep step resources in their classes? Do they refer to students to them as supplemental resources? Are they assigned as normal assignments? Um, honestly, you can go either way. I'm not sure if you are aware, I'm not sure what LMS you use, but we do have um, Blackboard, I believe Blackboard I, I saw on your website. If you use the Blackboard LMS, you can actually use the LTI integration so that teachers can actually assign some of the resources in prep step through their coursework. Um, that you're going to have to decide how you want to use it. If you want to, to use it as an assignment, then you'll have to download the LTI tool. I can, I think I can show you where that, you can get that information. Otherwise, you can um, link out directly to this platform to allow students to explore on their own. So it's really up to how you really intend to use the resources. If you want to assign a test in a course to get graded information to your student information system, um, then you'll use the LTI connection. Otherwise, if you are in a library setting and a librarian wants to assign supplemental resources, you can just link out or have your users access this platform via the library's link. Okay. All right, any other questions? Let me see if we have any other. Well, while we wait to see if any other questions roll in, um, I was wondering how often is new content added or old content updated? Okay, so new content, I believe we add new content on a quarterly or rather make updates on a quarterly basis. Um, we have subject matter experts in our content team who work with um, authors to keep content up to date. So uh, for the official exams like the LSAT, um, for example, or the CLEP, we do have content matter experts that are monitoring the test specifications that are issued by those um, organizations that 
issue the exam. So we are we, we basically model our test pra our practice tests off of those official exams, and our content experts are assigned to particular tests to make sure that that stuff is updated. So in the event that something, uh, if there's a new release coming out, we'll make sure that our resources are up to date with the latest test specifications. There have been opportunity uh, times when we've pulled content until we can make those updates, but typically there's enough of a runway to make sure that our resources are up to date. Thank you. And we have a question coming in, Dr. D. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, this, this was a great session to learn from. Um, so I was actually navigating to the site as you were explaining things. Um, so I wonder, you know, if we have to log in every time a test or a prep or a tutorial is um, going to be selected, because that was the one thing that I was running to every time I selected an item that I wanted to explore. And they said that, you know, even if I was logged in with my UDC um, credentials, you know, they, they always said that I needed to um, uh, sign in for that particular item that I was exploring. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I don't believe we have single sign on. Um, for this platform, unless you use the LTI integration. So I'm not sure if you utilize uh, Blackboard, but I think if you assign the resource to a student using your Blackboard LMS, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those resources would automatically appear, you'd have to select the group of resources you want to assign to a, to a class, but then your students would not have to log into this platform to access those resources. Oh. But if you are, as an individual user for self-paced practice, mm -hmm. yes, you it does require login. Okay, that's very helpful to know. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes. I think we have one, one question. Um, is there a video for adding information to Blackboard? Um, I don't think there's a video, but let me show you where you can access the resources. So if you were to access the contact us link here at the top in the upper right corner, that is going to redirect you. So you'll click this link to our support site called connect.epsco.com. Um, I'll click home. So this is the home page. Uh, and this is where you can access all of our resources. I believe under tools and resources, let's see, promotional materials. Yes, if I click under tools and resources, promotional materials on this page, and then I did a search for prep step. Let's see, prep step for colleges and universities logo. There's a media kit. We have a high school version too. So you're gonna make sure you're looking at the college and universities one because we have one for community colleges. You guys have the colleges and universities, the four year version. Uh, let's see. I think there's an LMS resource. And if any faculty members are interested in directly inputting this into Blackboard, it's likely we'll have to work with Fatma on that. Um, and we would be happy to help facilitate that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fatma is our quickly. Blackboard coordinator. And what I can do, I'm not sure exactly. It's somewhere on this page, my apologies, but there's a simpler, simpler way to get to this. What I can do is follow up with a link to that, because I know that our, our marketing group recently updated that, but it should be available here. I might just be looking too, too quickly through this. Um, let's see, I don't think it's in the social media kit. Instead of boring you with my search, I will um, include that link in my follow-up email to you. Um, it may not be on Connect, it may be on our marketing page. But there is, we have instructions, it's, a, it's not a video, but it's a, uh, a walkthrough PDF uh, for, for um, downloading. And I believe it's uh, LTI 1.3 Blackboard is the um, integration that we have. So I'll, I'll make sure that I in include that in my email to Megan and she can distribute that information, but it is available on our Connect page. Okay. Any questions? I have one. Yes. I have a question. Um, is this something that that is taught to the um as like a pre uh, orientation to high school students? Is it taken um, there? It can be. I believe we have 
the placement test preparation center. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a, a wonderful use of the platform for incoming freshmen at your university, right. because they can, you know, for any incoming uh, college students can prepare for the AccuPlacer and asset and clap. Uh, to earn credits so that they can, you know, re reduce the, uh, the need for those remedial courses or the, the developmental courses. So they right. can use these resources for that. Also the basic computer skills and core math and science skills, as well as English skills are also supportive resources for those incoming students and anyone who needs extra practice to mm -hmm. uh, improve their basic skills and in any of these subject areas. We also have a number of soft skill resources that uh, fit really well for incoming freshmen. Uh, we've got uh, resources on getting academic support, um, classroom success skills, uh, tells them how to uh, effective strategies for reading, effective strategies for success in online classes, note-taking strategies. So there are a bunch of soft skills that lend themselves well to incoming freshmen and first year students. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we are nearing the end of our time. Uh, just as give a minute or two more for questions to come in. Um, PropStep is a great resource. Uh, thank you for walking us through that today, Shana. And uh, if anyone attending today has follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we will be happy to help you uh, learn more about embedding this into Blackboard or promoting it to your students. Um, and this recording will be sent and shared, so you may review it uh, on your own time uh, once the session is done. I'm going to place a survey link into the chat. And if you could please give us feedback on today's session, that would be great. And anything I received from Shana today, I will forward along to anyone who's attended today, along with your certificate of attendance. Um, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And we thank you for attending today. Thank you everyone for your time. And thanks for subscribing. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. You too. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. And I'm going to stop the recording now in case anyone would like to ask any questions not to be recorded. So thank you again.